Hey everybody, my name is Owen Fox. Um, I work as a spiritual, radiant, abundant life coach of body, mind and spirit and I received a question lately about um, how do you how do you be self-honest um, and like look after your needs and say no maybe without actually um, isolating yourself um, and what is the balance between um, loving others and doing things for them and then actually loving yourself and saying no and not doing things that they want you to do. <laughs> so how do you become self-honest as well as another question that I got and I can kind of all put it into this video. So it all, the answer is your feelings and your emotions, okay, and it's also the answer is balance, ratio and degree, okay. So first of all, you, you live your life ideally through your emotions. Um, when something feels good, that's an indicator you're interested in it, you like it, or you like that person. And obviously you want to spend more time with the person sometimes, um, or more time in a nice place like nature, in the sunlight, in a park, in, a, in, in, a, in the ocean, in the sea, in a river, in at the gym, in the swimming pool, <laughs> and whatever you happen to really like. Um, or you might like to cycle, dance, sing, knit, watch certain television programs. So your emotions tell you if you're interested or not. Um, so if somebody asks you, do you want to go to the cinema? You, or if you want to go doing this hobby of theirs, you might not like it. And you're, you'll just simply know you're not interested. So a very famous teacher called Bashar says, like his idea is to follow your, what excites you the most. And I really agree with this. So the, the feeling of excitement is a very, very powerful feeling. It's a tingling, powerful feeling. It's like it's just an energy surge, like you're excited. You want to do it. You're enthusiastic and excited. And you want to like, you want to go. So if you don't have this feeling, and let's say it's much lower. Let's say you're tired or you're sick. Or you really just hate what they're talking about. What they want to do. Or you don't like this person's energy, they're like negative and complaining and critical and maybe they're criticizing you. There's not a chance in hell you want to be with them, basically speaking. So your emotions are clearly guiding you. Many people say your emotions um, guide you. And I, this is what I'm saying in this video as well. They do guide you. So listen to your emotions. So to know yourself more, pay attention to your emotions. And what's also very linked to your, emo your emotions are your thoughts. So pay attention to your thoughts as well. Because we have emo emotions spring up from, they spring up quickly, but sometimes we get a negative emotion because we have a belief, like a filter, like the sunlight coming through the window. It's coming through something, and when it hits us, it's like the emotion. For example, if I have the, let's say I was um, lied to, or deceived, or used, or abused, or, or criticized a lot as a child, or let's say men um, took advantage of me as well then suddenly in the future I could have this feeling of mistrust and like a bad feeling because I have a belief that men are not trustworthy um, or it could be women are not trustworthy um, it could be the opposite so we have to investigate our beliefs that's a pivotal importance on the spiritual path looking and investigating your mind your thoughts your beliefs very important so what are my beliefs right now pertaining to this situation they're trying to take advantage of me, they're trying to use me, they're, mani they're manipulating me, they don't care for me, um, they want their own good, they're being selfish, they're, they're, they're not understanding me. You know, we can spring to a huge amount of assumptions. And in the Four Agreement book by Don Ruiz, it's a pretty famous book, um, one, of the main, one, of the, one of the Four Agreements is do, don't make assumptions. So this ties in with um, don't make sudden quick just be careful of your beliefs basically and look at your mind and know what your belief system is because let's say I switch it you can switch your beliefs You can, you can. can. if a belief is true, yeah that's good that's why emotions are there to guide you because let's say they are trying to manipulate you this, this, is, like a red, this is like a flag to protect you you feel bad, and you're, you're skeptical and you're more less likely to get killed, hurt, abused or abused, like used or abused. So that's a very good thing they have this emotion. But let's say it's not true. That's where the issue comes in. That's where you need to, that, that's when you're getting red flags and they're not even really there. That's where self-healing and self-honesty and self-reflection and self-questioning come in. So 
that's also very important. So um, that has to be mentioned regarding your beliefs um, too, regarding living by your feelings. So how do you um, actually, so I want to switch to the whole thing about ratio, degree and balance. So life isn't a clear black and white answer. Or, so it's multifaceted. There's many things in any equation. Like sometimes you have to compromise or like be more flexible than other, other times. We we need to if if we're afraid to say no, we're we live in a cage. That's what, there's a nice quotation I saw on Facebook the other day. Um, there's a picture of a cage around someone's head. But yeah, the more we're overly obsessed, which is an imbalance of, of excessive care, imbalance excessive care what other people want from us or like. We, we then neglect an imbalance in the low scale of what we really want. So we, we might really want to stay at home when people ask us out. And it's not the end of the world, you can go out with them another day. If you don't like them, then don't go out with them ever again. Just say, no, I'm not interested. Like, you don't say that, no. You don't have to say, no, I'm not interested in you. I don't like you. <laughs> Although you can say that if you want, but you know you have free will. But you can just say, no, you make pleasant little... No, I'm not interested in these things. Like, that's what I said in the past. I'm not interested in going to parties where the smoke people are like just flirting and posing and pu pulling shapes all night long. It's just superficial bullshit I felt at the time. I just didn't, not, not interested in that. So I never get asked ever again for like the last 10 years almost. Just not interested in that. It's like non spiritual stuff, non self honesty. It's a whole lot of like bra braggadocious, flirtatious. Like too much stuff going on about non-self honesty, basically speaking, like non-true, authentic heart stuff, um, trying to pretend to be better or bigger or something you're not, and then people playing small, like as if they're they're not worth stuff. Um, but that was teenage years, you know, it was like a long time ago. So, and um, sometimes you have to be honest and say I'm not interested in that. Let's say you are interested, say okay, well I'm interested, but just not this time. So that's not the end of the world. Say I'd like to go another time. So. You don't have, saying no doesn't mean it's like you're saying no forever, every single time in the future. It just means you're saying no this time, and it could be the next time, it could be the next time. You could say, listen, I just need a month to myself, or I need a week. I just need to relax, I'm tired and I'm stressed. And that's honesty. This is where honesty and the spiritual path is so important. Being honest with yourself and being honest with others. Understanding your own needs. There's a quotation, something like, understanding others is wise. Understanding yourself is enlightenment. <laughs> And then there's another quotation I just saw on Facebook as well. Um, apparently Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu from the Tao Te Ching said that quotation I just said. But then there's another one. When you, the adolescent sees the faults in the parents, when you, the, then when you become an adult, you forgive your parents. Um, when you become fully grown up, that when you read, when you forgive yourself, that's when you become wise. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, so the ad, so the adolescent sees the faults in the parents. The adult forgives the faults in the parents. And when you forgive your own, when you forgive yourself, that's when you become wise. Something like that. So. It's about looking and knowing yourself and understanding yourself and then understanding your needs and your true heartfelt desires. Those two things, your needs, you might need sleep, you might need rest, you might need exercise, you might need sunlight, you might need water, you might need food, you might need um, take a break from unhealthy food and take healthy food. You might need you might need to take more time and rest and relaxation for yourself. All these things, your needs, you might need social time, you might need a break from social time. You might need to um, breathe, you might need to be creative, you might need to do something like, like knitting or singing or dancing or um, doing art or you might need to do something to attend to your house. You might feel the need, the need to look after your home environment, like look after your kid, your, your mum or your dad or your brother or your sister, to be attentive uh, to someone else as well, that can be a need. There's so many different needs we have, it's so important to know your needs. Um, Self-love comes first, um, but you balance it with other, like loving others. It's not about you're not trying to neglect yourself, 
but you're absolutely not trying to neglect others. But at the same time, people also need to learn how to look after themselves. Because if we pamper everyone excessively where they never learn to look after themselves, that's like the whole idea of like, give a man a piece of bread, it lasts for a meal. Teach them how to grow their own orchard, it lasts forever. So sometimes you want to give people <laughs> some apples and help them out and be nice and kind. That's part of life. I 100% encourage that. It's like lovely. We really want to do that. And then, then often though you want to encourage people to be self-sufficient and sustainable emotionally, and um, so they're not like an immature, like emotionally, like vulnerable child. We want to encourage them to learn how to practice self-love in daily life, and to be happy without you, not to be dependent. Codependency is a negative thing. Like there's books written on codependency, and um, you want to be mature and you want to come together to celebrate life and to be happy and joyful together, not to come together because you're really desperate and needy. But of course, the problem shared is a problem halved. And um, learning from your mistakes when you're talking about your problems, like it's good to vent and let things out and like share, like a problem shared is a problem halved. But you don't want to dwell forever in negativity. So this ties into the whole idea of balance, ratio and degree. It's great to have a little balance and ratio and degree of like being able to like share your, your, what you're upset about or sad or angry about, etc. All emotions serve a purpose and it's good to allow them in ourselves and even to talk about them with other people. It's like, I hate the rainy weather today. But if you keep mulling all day long about the rainy weather and you're crying and you're depressed, that is an imbalanced behavior. It's like a dependent, it's a dependent, dependent behavior on the weather. So you don't want a codependent relationship either with a person. Um, you want to come together and be happy. So you want to go out in nature and be happy with the weather. You want to go out with a person and be happy. You don't want to be meeting them because you think they're going to have a breakdown if they don't see you or start crying. That's not your problem, I'm afraid to say. It sounds harsh, but that's like, that's like a child always having a temper tantrum and you keep, giving, keep feeding it. And you don't allow them to like grow up and to overcome the tantrum phase. Um, you, you don't want to feed someone's dependency. It's like a dependency is a drug. You don't want to, you're a drug. Do you really want to keep like giving someone their drug always? That's not healthy. And there's so many relationships like that. People not only stay in relationships because of codependency, and you see a miserable, shitty relationship that's disconnected, even sometimes like violent or abusive or destructive for a long time because of like the, the hassle of breaking up or the fear of the unknown. And people actually not only stay together because of codependency and habit, but they get together in the first place, neatly, quickly, prematurely, rapidly, because they have this drug, this like drug addiction, the need that they, 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 they haven't healed, and they just want to like jump in, like to be soothed from their pain of loneliness or insecurity or vulnerability. And you know this yourself, guys, either from your own experience or from seeing other people, that leads to mayhem and long, unfulfilled, sad or depressing relationships. And in absence of kick-ass, happy, joyful relationships, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. You're really happy together. You see eye to eye, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and you're physically bonded and love each other and are kind and understanding and affectionate. You can communicate and you have a really great life together and you have a similar focus and path and direction. So it's not just about like avoiding the misery. It's about having the kick-ass relationship at the top of the, of the mountain. <laughs> It's not about just simply avoiding the crap relationship or settle for an average relationship. You want to settle for like 90 to, 95 to 100 percent match. Most people are in like whatever percent, you know, a low percentage, like not, not, not anywhere near 95 to 100 percent. So don't settle. And getting off a little slight bit of track there, but yeah, your emotions guide you how to live your life and make decisions. And it's not about all or nothing. That's a dramatic like belief system where you think they can't handle me saying no, or if I say no now, it means no forever. If it's something you like, then say, yeah, I'll come out with you in another few days or a few weeks. So, so you can see how simple that is. You just, it's simple, it's easy. And you get on with their life, they get on with your life. And then you can talk, type, text, or meet each other in a few weeks or months. Depends how close you are to that person. There's no point in spending your time excessively. Now it's all about balance, ratio and degree again, excessively with people who you don't make you feel joyful and happy. There's a million people in the world. Let them hang out with people who they resonate with, you have really good conversations and you know, add to each other's company and let you hang out with similar people. In my life I, I bloody talk to loads of people but I only hang, that's only in very small percentages. Like I say hi, joke, laugh, 
I I compliment people in the shops, people who are in the check in the checkout lines, people who are serving me in the supermarkets, um, anywhere, in any shops. I go go and buy bicycles. I can compliment people on their hat, their anything really, their, anything. I, I like your you're looking slick today, you're looking smart. I love your suit. I love your shirt. I love your tie. I like your hair. I like your shoes. Anything. And I'm regularly, depending on my energy and mood, bringing happiness uh, to people. And that's just because I'm an ext I'm more of an extrovert, okay? Introverts, depending on your introvertism, won't be being like a bit of a madman or a slight bit of a clown either. That's just the way I am, you know? So, um, but when it comes to hanging out a lot with people, it's I'm very, very, very selective. They have to bring me happiness and I have to bring them happiness. Or it's just for that's the way it generally is speaking to be honest. Like um, if there is an accident, I'd gladly help. It's not it's not like someone's bringing me happiness, but I'd love to help if there's an accident. Similarly I do coaching work, I do spiritual abundant radiant life coaching of body, mind and spirit. Um, body, mind, spirit, health, physical, mental, emotional. And I receive I give help and power and beauty, joy and abundance and radiance to their life and they do the same for me through giving me money which is beautiful and empowering. It's a lovely gift of love. I love them and they love me. Um, but at the end of the day we do live in the physical world and it's not fair for someone like working with in a holistic business. It could be anything like massage, Reiki, bioenergy healing, um, counselling, um, coaching. Obviously, they should be they should be able to have a home and pay the bills. <laughs> so that's that's tied in with energy exchange. And this whole topic is a bit like energy exchange. You want somewhere close energy exchange, love and appreciation given, love and appreciation received. Life is too short not to be happy. I'll leave you with that quote. So just look at your emotions. Are you happy? Are you spending time with people and places and doing things that make you happy or not? Because at the end of the day, you deserve. You are deserving and you deserve happiness. So just look at your emotions. How happy are you? There's always exceptions. Like this isn't a solid rule that can't be broken. There's always exceptions. There's always ex exceptions in life. But that's where I talk about ratio, balance and degree. The degree of which you do things for how long. What's the ratio, the balance? So know thyself. Understand yourself. Follow self-love and self-joy and nurture. And do that for yourself. And the more you become happier, the more you do this, it'll raise your vibration. You're letting go of the stuff that's negative and not a positive energy exchange for you. As you let go of what's bringing your vibration down, like like um, a balloon with some weights on it, you just let go of the weights, it'll rise up. That's your vibration. You're raising your vibration, okay? You can also raise your vibration by doing things that uplift your spirit naturally, like going out in nature, doing exercise, eating healthier, and spending more time with loving ones, opening your heart, doing healing, being kind, that's all like being kind and giving like random acts of kindness or little compliments or nice things or any little kind thing, even the people you live with in it around your home, around your workplace, buying someone a coffee, making some their tea, cleaning the place more, anything like that can really help raise your vibration because you brought this you've spiritually raised your vibration by opening your heart and changing your way of seeing things and viewing things from your heart and your mind then it translates into physical action and the physical action itself is like the physical action itself is like um what's the what's the word um oh, i forget the word it's like um the ceremony of the spiritual inner change has happened within you <laughs> so thought and energy come first and then the action the ceremonious thing comes first, like lighting a candle, burning a fire, burning some incense, that's the word I'm trying to think of, so, yeah, I hope this video has helped, um, and healing from the past and our cultural and our childhood beliefs and traumas is a huge part in this too, that's why I mentioned beliefs earlier, so, the more you become heal and unblock, the more you become clear, so, Hope this helped and thanks for your time and love. I ask if you want to support me and add and enrich and empower to bring an extra abundance to my life, me, my family, and love me, my family, my loved ones, and 
and um, my work in the world if you want to support me my work my messages my video please subscribe share like leave a comment befriend me on facebook look at my links below for my spiritual my radiant abundant spiritual life coaching of body mind and spirit as well as my higher self herbs webshop to recharge charge and supercharge your life and your mind your body your spirit relate befriend me on facebook and um, i'd love to connect with you um i appreciate your time and your intentions and your effort and your love and, and your care your kindness and have a look below at my links i have check out my radiant abundant spiritual life coaching of body mind and spirit and um, for one-to-one -one help my website is below owenfox.org my higher self herbs website to charge recharge and supercharge your life your mind your body your heart your spirit your physical body and everything as well as my two books below and much much more have a look below um, and i'd love to connect with you and hear more from you and i'd love to see you again in the future so thanks again and don't forget to connect or otherwise thanks for your loving energy from a distance have a great day and kick ass and be strong powerful and know you deserve the very best in life let go of your fear and just have an amazing day and everything is okay your love supported and guided and just kick ass and be yourself 100 percent um there's no spirit like there's just there's no rules to confine you just let loose and be yourself and have an amazing 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 time and share yourself with the world that's all i can say so can't say anything else